I have an addiction. It started a couple years ago when I just got sick and tired of my table saw. It wasn't doing what I needed it to do. I tried everything possible. I don't know what else to do. So I cut the power off and now I'm unplugged. Okay, so it's, it's official. I have an addiction to hand planes. I really like them. I like the hand tool world and everything like that. Cutting, sawing, hand planing, the joinery, everything like that. It all appeals to me and I enjoy every aspect of it. Even the part of trying to figure out a what, different way not to sand something, but just create the finished products that you don't have to sand. So over the past couple of years, I've acquired quite a few block planes and some of them are in decent condition. This one's pretty good. This one's uh, ready to use. I use this one quite a bit. And then you have some that are like this. This one's scary. This one's a Stanley 220 and it looks like it's been through hell and back. And there's stuff all over the bottom of it. The blade's not in any kind of ready condition. It's missing the front knob. So today I figured I will line all these up and give them one good run through everything. Clean them up on all their sides, make sure their blade's good and just kind of show you guys how I do it. So one of the first things I'm going to do with all of these planes, whether they're in good condition or decent or just in really crappy condition, I'm going to go ahead and run them all over this 150 grit sandpaper, get the bottoms flattened out, get the sides cleaned up, and then I'll take it up to the next step, and then I will go ahead and work on a blade. If I have time at the end, I will go ahead and turn a couple of these front knobs hopefully on a drill press. Doing all this work on these little hand planes can be quite a tedious task, but it's something that if you're involved in the hand tools, you really actually quite enjoy. I just haven't had time to really clean these up. See, some of these are just like surface rust. Always make sure that you got your blade recessed. So it's flat on the heel and the toe. One of the main things that you really have to look for is make sure that it's really flat right here on the heel, right here on the toe, and then also right where the blade comes through. If these aren't flat, then you aren't going to get a nice cut. It doesn't really matter right here because this is after the cutting place, but you need it flat right at the cutter, the toe, and the heel. This plane right here is the very first one that I ever got and it was given to me by my wife. She surprised me and this one I've kept in pretty good condition. I use this one quite a bit. It's got an edge on it already. But I'm just going to go ahead and touch it up. I went ahead and got started on this uh, Stanley 220 and I was checking the blade on it. And it wasn't moving so I started looking into it. And I noticed right here, it's supposed to have this like little ridge right there to catch the blade. And it's not there anymore. And it's also stripped out. So this mechanism and the screw, or the, the thumb screw adjuster is no good. So I'm going to go ahead and move on to this other bluish colored one. I don't have a clue who the maker is on it. All it says is made in USA. Has no other marks on it. So I'm going to get this one cleaned up. I like the blue color on it, so we'll clean this up. This is one of my most used block planes, and it's got a little issue going on with the heel right now. It's just not going away. It's making me filthy. can't believe how dirty I'm getting by doing this. Never thought woodworking would be this nasty. Still not going away. It's getting a little bit better. It's actually catching on the edge now. I'm just going to keep on working on it a little bit. I need this one to be in working order since I use it so much. So now after you've gotten all of the soles flattened, we can start going ahead and working on all the blades. This one is one of the better ones that I have and all I'm going to be doing is keeping the uh, 120 grit on here. I'm just going to go over all the backs real quick just to make sure that they're flat.
This is taking forever. I don't know why I ever did this all at one time. But hey, at least it's getting done now. All right, so I'm on my third blade now that I am getting the cutting edge sharpened. I've still got the 120 grit in there. I'm just running over, cleaning up all the edges, all the chips, trying to get those out. And surprisingly, these things are very sharp uh, just at 120. So I might do a little test and see how sharp it actually is and then see the difference at the end maybe I think that with 120 you'd be able to cut especially if you didn't have like a stone or have higher grit sandpaper you could just use like a 120 or 180 or even 220 grit sandpaper but I'm gonna keep on working on these so I get them done sorta I think I might just do this and then finish up tomorrow okay well that's all I'm gonna get done for right now I've gotten all the soles flattened the back's flat, and we've got them all up to 120 grit on the Scary Sharp method. And when I get back out here, I'll continue going up on them to get them really sharp. Thanks for joining me on this extremely fun adventure that I've taken you on. And, uh, you know, if you guys ever do this, leave it in the comments below. Let me know how you guys work with sharpening your planes, especially if you got a lot that you need to get up to date. If you guys have a different method to use, leave it in the comments below. That way I can try that out. I got some number fives that I want to do the same thing on, sharpen the uh, blades, flatten soles, yada yada yada, all that kind of stuff. So leave it in the comments below, leave a thumbs up, thanks for watching, see you guys on the next one.